Hey, future bestsellers, Lisa Daly here. I'm a best-selling, traditionally published self-help author. And today, by the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to know to write a self-help book proposal. Thanks so much for watching today. If you want to write a book that you are super proud of and get it published, go ahead and hit subscribe right now because that is what we are all about. So I have written lots of book proposals in my day and have even ghost written some book proposals. And I can tell you that they are basically the same with a few differences between genres. That said, today we are talking specifically about how to write a self-help book proposal. So let's get started. On page one of your book proposal, you're basically going to include the title of the book, and we want this to be a nice, clean title page, any subtitle that you have, your name as the author, and right up at the top, you wanna to say that this is a book proposal. In addition to that, you wanna make sure that you have your agent's name, phone number, email, and any other contact information that he or she normally shares. Obviously, you wanna make sure that this is done as a Word document, so any little tweaks that your agent feels that they need to make, that they can go ahead and make. Now, a lot of people sort of freak out about the idea of their agent making any changes to their book proposal. And certainly you wanna be comfortable with anything that's being said. But the thing that's really important to remember about this is that this is not the book, this is the document that sells the book. And while you don't wanna misrepresent what it is you want to write a book about, it's okay if your agent is making some sort of sales tweaks and, and helping you to position the book in a way that she thinks or he thinks is best going to fit in the marketplace. After all, your agent's not gonna make any money unless he or she sells that book. So after your title page, the first page that you wanna include is a table of contents. The reason we include a table of contents is because we wanna make it as easy as possible for potential editors and publishers to find the information they're looking for. There are two things a publisher wants to know. Who is this person and what is this book about? And you wanna make sure that you make it as easy as possible for them to find that information. What do you include in the table of contents? So the table of contents should include a number of different items. Number one, about the book. Number two, about you as the author. Number three, the prospective audience for the book. Now, I wanna give you a hint here. Don't say everybody, because there's almost no book on the planet that everybody buys. Your next section will go into pomp titles, and that basically means comparable titles. Think about it as if you were selling real estate. If you wanna put your house on the market, you're going to look at other similar houses in the neighborhood that have the same square footage, the same features, etc. The same thing is true for publishing. And it is an unfortunate fact that there is almost nothing new in publishing. Editors and publishers and bookstores all want to see books that are similar to books that have already sold well. So while you may have a brand new take on dating or sales or how to make more money, the audience for your book proposal, which is editors and publishers, is going to want to know that they're not taking a huge risk by publishing your book. Next, you're going to include a basic marketing plan for the book. Finally, the great thing about writing a self-help book is that even if you've never been published before, you really only need to write a couple of chapters chapters and an extensive outline in order to get published. So that's the basics of what you'll find in the table of contents. Now let's go through each section uh, with a little more detail. So the first section is where you're going to talk about what your book is about. Now I don't want you to go into a big, you know, 57 page detail here. Really think about this in terms of one page, sort of back of the book sales copy, otherwise known as a blurb, and really take it from there. You want to pique the editor's uh, attention enough that they want to see more or that they're interested in buying the book, but you don't need to provide the entire book for them to know that they're interested. Section two is all about you. 
Now this is where you're going to give information about your biography. Are you an expert in your field? Do you teach on the subject? Do you have a massive social media following who looks to you for advice on the book's topic? Are you well known in your field? Do you get a lot of media attention? This is the place where you want to put that information in. Because like I said, the things that editors and publishers care most about are what is this book about and who is this person. And you want to give them that information right up front. So for me, I actually have a ton of media experience. I've done over 3,000 interviews. I'm a regular on a nationally syndicated morning television show. So that is information that I put front and center in any book proposal that I write. I already have a good track record as far as publication, and I have an awesome fan base. So I don't want you to stress out if you don't have any publishing or media experience. Your job in this section is just to explain why you are the very best person to write this book. And when I wrote my first book, Stop Getting Dumped, I didn't have any publishing experience. I didn't have any media experience. I was an award-winning advertising copywriter and seven of my eight closest girlfriends had all gotten married within a year and a half following my advice. Section three. This next section is all about the target audience for your book. Basically, who will buy this book? So I had written a book, How to Date Like a Grown Up, and the primary buyer was women who were in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, middle to upper income, recently separated or divorced, or contemplating divorce. They had some college or a college education. She felt nervous about going back into the dating pool after being married for 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, she felt she might feel ashamed or like a failure. She might be really excited about you know this sort of whole new world. She was probably nervous about having sex again with a new partner after 10 or 15 or 20 years. And so for that specific book, those were the people that I knew I was targeting. They were the people who had shown up to my events they were the people that inspired me to write that book, and it was their questions that I wanted to answer. They were the people that I wanted to help. Like many marketing plans, this is something uh, that sort of takes a lot of guesswork. That said, if you have a big social media audience, you might already have some really good analytics as to who your current fan base is. If you are writing for people like yourself, you, you know, you can include that type of information. If you're a speaker or a coach, think about what your clients and audience participants have in common. Are they professional? Are they college educated? Are they stay at home moms? Are they 20 year olds who are fashion forward? Are they men who are looking to date after being married for a long time? Who is your audience? And, it, and the more detailed you can get here, the better. You're going to write a different kind of self-help or empowerment book for people who have no education versus people who have master's or doctorate degrees. It's really important to think about who you're writing this book for and know that not every book fits every audience. So when you're writing this marketing section, it's really important to include things that are demographic in nature. So how much money do they earn? How much education do they have? How old are they? Do they live in a specific area of the country? Or is your audience worldwide? But it's also important to include psychographic information. What are they afraid of? What kind of clubs do they join? What do you know about them? And really think about who your target audience is as a person. Because not only will it make it a lot clearer for the publisher who this book is for, but it will also make it a lot clearer for you as you are writing the book. What the publisher is really looking for is, does anybody actually need this book? And what you need to do is prove to them that the answer is yes. So section four is your comp title section. And that basically means comparable titles. Now in this section, you're going to include books that have a similar message, a similar audience, 
that were successful. <laughs> you don't want to put any duds in your list of comps because again, we're trying to prove to a publisher that there is actually a market for this book. There are lots of self-help book concepts that are evergreen. People are always going to need to know what to do with their finances, with their jobs, with their marriages, with their lack of sleep, with their lack of happiness. And so even though there have already been hundreds, thousands of books on those, hundreds of thousands of books on those topics, there's always room for one more if you can find a unique angle. And speaking of unique angle, after you talk about how there are already all these other books on the market that are selling like gangbusters that are similar to your book, this is where you want to put how your book differs from all the competition. And that's what publishers and booksellers in particular are really looking for. The same, but different. Section number five in your self-help book proposal, you want to include a marketing and publicity plan. It is helpful if you actually have one. And this is a lot of what a self-help book proposal is all about. So this is basically where you explain how you're going to drum up publicity for the book. And believe me, this is something that your publisher is going to expect you to be responsible for. You should consider any effort that they make as ancillary. They are going to expect for you to do a lot, if not all, of the heavy lifting. Because I have the benefit of being on television every week, anytime I have a new book release, I can always really count on the awesome folks at daytime doing a really nice segment uh, on the book. This is also the section where you're going to talk about your website if you have one and how much traffic you have. Uh, you're going to talk about your social media presence, how many followers you have on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. And this is also where you're going to talk about anybody who has already agreed to blurb the book. Now, if this is just your local pastor or some friend of yours, then don't bother. But if you have someone who is high profile, who is willing to say something nice about your book, you know, say Marianne Williamson is going to blurb your book, this is the place to put it in. Uh, publishers know that good blurbs, high profile blurbs, are hard to come by. And so if you happen to be a people person with the ability to make those contacts, this is the place to include it. Finally, in this section, you want to include the publishing details. And this basically means how many words you expect your finished manuscript to be and when you expect it to be completed. Now this is by no means set in stone, but this gives the publisher a really good idea of what you're shooting for. Section six. So this section is what is this book about? In this section, you're going to include the title, the subtitle, and the table of contents, along with a brief description of what is included in every chapter. Sample chapters. This is where you include your, the sample chapters of your work. Now, you can include the first chapter if you like, uh, but it's always wise to include your best chapter. And you don't want to go overboard here. I find that anywhere between two and five chapters is generally enough to sell the book. Finally, you want to make sure that every page is numbered, that your document is double spaced with one inch borders all around. Now you're ready for submitting a book proposal. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be posting lots more on how to write and sell uh, non-fiction books. If you want to write a book that you are super proud of and get it published, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. And while you're at it, please remember to like this video and ding that little bell so you'll be notified every time I post new writing videos. If you're interested in seeing a copy of the book proposal template that I use to write my book proposals, I'll actually put a link right down in the description below and you can just
just click that and I'll just send it to you in an email. And if you have any questions at all about how to write a self-help book proposal, be sure to go ahead and let me know down in the comments below and I'll either answer right in the comments if it's a quick question or I will answer you in a future video. Thanks so much for watching today. All right, get out there and change some lives.